Welcome to the Juniper Identity Management Service installation, configuration, and operational video. Let's first begin by reviewing our topology for today's video. We'll be using an SRX 1500 and Juno Space Security Director. Our clients will be Windows 10 for each respective Windows domain, one hosted by Windows Server 2012 and one Server 2016. Let's begin our installation of our primary GIMS instance on our Juniper 16 domain. We'll log in as the administrator and run the executable. The GIMS service requires the Microsoft Visual C++ software package to be installed. We'll accept the license, configure the username and the organization, and the server port that GIMS the service will listen on. We'll launch the administrative interface, log in as our pre-configured GIM16 user, and then we'll begin our configuration. Our first event source can be a domain controller or an exchange server. Our first event source will be the Juniper16 domain controller. We'll give it the IP address, the GIM16 username and login, and click OK. Our next event source will be our Juniper12 domain. For today's video, our GIM service will run on each of our domain controllers, but the GIM service can run on any of the Windows servers from 2008 R2 or later. Next, let's configure our informational sources. Again, one for our Juniper 16 domain and one for our Juniper 12 domain. Event sources provide GIMs with login and logout information. Our informational sources provide GIMs with our user, group, and device mapping. Next, we'll configure a PC probe for each of our domains. A PC probe provides GIMs the ability to probe a client machine that has reached its session timeout and may or may not have been logged out. Next, we'll configure the SRX 1500 client in the GIMS interface to allow the SRX access to the GIMS service. We'll give it the description, an IP address, the client ID, and the secret password. Our final configuration in the GIMS interface will be to add an IP filter for our user subnet. Finally, we'll review the status of the GIM service. We'll see our summary, our system information, our SRX 1500 client status, which is currently inactive until we configure the SRX 1500, our two event sources that currently have polls completed, our informational sources, which we've had one request to our primary controller, and our PC probes. After wrapping up our GIMS configuration, it's time to move to Juno Space Security Director to add the configuration for our SRX 1500. First, we'll review our threat dashboard. Our point of primary interest is our blocked websites. Then, we'll move to our capacity dashboard and take a look at our top users and IP sources, which are IP addresses currently. Next, let's navigate to our configuration window and select our identity management under user firewall. Here, we'll add our identity management profile. We'll configure a name for our profile, configure the IP address of our primary GIMS instance that resides on our Juniper 16 domain controller, and then configure our secondary identity server on our Juniper 12 domain controller. We'll configure our auth entry timeout for 300 minutes, and then assign our SRX 1500 to this identity management profile.
Now that we've reviewed our configuration options for our identity management profile, we'll need to push the new configuration to our SRX 1500 to enable it to communicate with the primary and secondary GEMS instance. Excellent. Now that our configuration has been pushed to our SRX 1500, let's add our user identity management service to our configuration for outbound HTTP and SSL traffic for our users. For our example today, we'll just add our authenticated user into our HTTP and SSL policy. However, for a more granular control, we can add the groups or even usernames to our policies to be very specific and granular. Now, let's push our new policy information to our SRX 1500. We've successfully updated our security policies with our user details to our SRX 1500. Now, let's log in to our Juniper 12 domain as an IT user and generate some web traffic. Our IT user will launch the browser and load a pre-configured list of popular URLs to generate a significant amount of web traffic for our SRX 1500 to examine. Next, let's log in as a user in our Juniper 16 domain. Once we log in, we'll repeat our previous process to launch the browser and load a large list of pre-configured URLs to generate a significant amount of web traffic in our Juniper 16 domain. Once we give our web pages a moment to load, we'll return to Security Director so that we can see the granular information available for users and applications. Let's log in as Security Director and review the details on our dashboard. First, we'll begin by reviewing our threat information and we'll see that some URLs have been blocked down in our widget below. Next, let's review our capacity dashboard. We'll scroll down a bit to see our applications by volume and by session. We'll see our client machines based on IP address according to their volume. We'll review our top users and IP by session and notice that our user information has been populated from our Active Directory servers. We see a few users from our Juniper 16 domain and from our Juniper 12 domain. Now that we've reviewed our threat and capacity dashboards and seen our top volume and session based user information, let's dive a little bit deeper. First, we'll look at our users. We'll drill down for the last hour to specifically look at the generated traffic we performed earlier. We'll see that the Juniper 16 domain and the Juniper 12 domain each have a top performer. We can see bubble graphs, heat maps, we can sort on bandwidth and sessions, and further, we can drill down into our applications. Again, we have a host of information at our fingertips. We'll drill down on our applications 
to review our traffic based on application. There are several graph types to select from. We can group by risk or by categories. We can also show bandwidth or sessions. Thank you for joining me today for our overview of the Juniper Identity Management Service.